Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a crime thriller from the United States, English language, released in the year 2018, directed by Duncan Skiles, and this film is called The Clovich Killer. So The Clovich Killer is about this rural community in the United States. It's a very close-knit community, and it's a community that have gone through a lot of trauma, because 10 years previous, there is a serial killer known as The Clovich Killer, because his signature was a Clovich knot, and he killed 10 women. Now, t uh, it's been 10 years since his last murder, so everyone believes that he stopped for whatever reason, but they never got the identity of this guy. So there's a lot of uh, mental scars there for this town that they've never really to get, uh, been able to get closure on. And so they always uh, uh, honour the memory of these 10 women through each year, for, through a tribute. And there's a lot of sadness around. And so you've got the main character who's this teenage boy. And he is the, uh, the son of a father who is very recognised in this town. He does a lot of for the community and everyone really respects him. But then this teenage boy, when he stumbles upon something that he's not supposed to, he starts to suspect that maybe his father was the Clovich killer. And so uh, he doesn't believe it at first. But the more he starts to go into the, the father's garage, the more he starts to suspect that he's onto something. So he finds an ally in this girl who basically hasn't been able to let go of these murders because her mother was one of these victims and so basically she is just really caught up in this and every year she does an article as she writes about it everyone considers her a little bit weird but she teams up with this teenage boy and together they're going to find out the truth as whether or not this well-respected father is in fact the killer and whether or not he is in fact stopped killing so whether or not that is the case is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on The Clovich Killer. As far as serial killer films are concerned, I'm a massive fan. There have been so many great serial killer movies. You've got the South Korean film Memories of Murder. You had a very recent film from Hungary called Strangled. Uh, just so many movies like Zodiac from David Fincher. All these movies that just create a lot of mystery. And it's about the, the, the case of trying to track down the serial killer. And this is where I believe serial killer movies should be like. is because they're not slasher films. That's not a serial killer movie to me. Serial killer films is all about the thrill of catching that person. So when I saw Clovich Killer, I thought I definitely have to check this one out because it actually looks very riveting. It did get very good scores on IMDb. A lot of people have been praising this. So I thought to myself, all right, well, why not give this a shot? It's an independent American film. I wouldn't say it's a horror movie. It's more of a crime thriller. So I thought, what is this going to produce? And I was hoping that it was going to produce something very memorable. And thankfully, it does that. It's not a perfect movie. I believe that the second half of this film is nowhere near as good as the first half. But what this movie does very well, it captures you. It captures you in a sense of un unnerving quality. The unnerving quality is because you don't know who the bad guy is or who the good guy is. And so when you have no safety barrier, it does feel very awkward. And so you've got this Clovich killer straight away. It sets the mood. It tells you that these 10 women have lost their lives, but they've never caught this killer. So is the killer walking amongst them? And so that makes it very unnerving is that, okay, I don't know who to root for. I don't know whether or not this father is actually the killer. This father who this teenage boy has basically You've been with his whole life. He, he, this father is a role, uh, role model. This father is very well respected. Everyone likes him. And this is the way that serial killers get away with things. Is that Ted Bundy? You've got all these other serial killers where people, these got, they got away with it because on the outside they were very charismatic, very innocent, very caring. But on the inside they're hiding a monster. And so I thought this is what makes this film so creepy is that this very well respected father, he's a good father, he's a good husband. And I thought to myself, all right, well, is he hiding that monster? And it's not knowing is that creates even more intense qualities with this character that is played very well by Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott is a very good actor and he showcases his a, his quality in this movie as this father. Very likeable guy but a very strange sort of individual. He's got a very strange sense of humour. I thought to myself, alright well, maybe he is a serial killer but then again, maybe your imagination is running wild and that's exactly what this teenage boy is actually thinking. And so, the director is able to give you an insight into this boy's paranoia and whether or not the serial killer is actually a lot closer to the to him than he first thought. And so is he in danger or is he not in danger? And this is everything that suspense creates. This is everything that Alfred Hitchcock did so well, is that it's not revealing itself. So you're playing these guessing games and these guessing games can just magnify into something so much bigger. And that's what the first half of this film does so well. So not only do you have a great performance from Dylan McDermott, but Charlie Plummer as this boy, I thought the chemistry between father and son was there. I could actually, uh, I thought it was very authentic, the chemistry. I thought, okay, maybe they, they're basically real father and son, the, the love is there, but then as the teenage boy starts to find uh, different things in this uh, father's garage or in this father's truck, I started to believe, all right, well, he's starting to second guess uh, that his father is as innocent as everyone makes it out to be. But as I said, there's enough 
um, uh, there's enough ambiguity there to really indicate that maybe he's a serial killer or maybe he's not that serial killer. So as I said, it's that not knowing, it's that grey area that the movie magnifies very, very well to create an atmosphere that is very unnerving and that is complemented by very good cinematography. This is an independent movie and I think the independent quality of the film really works in its favour. Sometimes you get very high mainstream films where it's a little bit too polished for its own good, but this movie captures suburban life very well, the monotony of it all. And so the monotony just it sits there and it creates dread through the plain sort of uh, quality that the movie has. It's, it doesn't have vibrant colours. It's not a mega budget film, so it just feels very plain. And that plain quality is the suburban life, and that suburban life is what makes it very unnerving, is because the soundtrack, the score was very, very subtle, but it's enough to create a lot of power. And so the power magnifies through and it combines with the paranoia of the psychology and the very dreary sort of uh, cinematography to create that tight bubble that is just engulfing you and making the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And so I thought psychologically in the first half of this film, it was a homage to Alfred Hitchcock. As I said, it's not knowing where the bad guy is. Is he a bad guy or is he not a bad guy? And that to me is much scarier than actually knowing this because when you actually know, then you can actually take sides. And so the supporting cast... I thought did a very good job, but it's definitely Charlie Plummer and Dylan McDermott that really stand out, and so that was something that I really, really liked. I thought that the movie doesn't really rely on violence. It relies, as I said, on that anticipation that something could happen, and so I thought that was very good. But unfortunately, this is where I start with the negatives. I believe that the movie's a little bit too long, and it reveals itself way too early. So when the second half reveals itself, it loses all of the quality that the first half had. That first half had that build-up of something very bad happening, is that I didn't know where the bad guy was but when it reveals itself then all of a sudden it, it tracks down territory where I thought it was getting a little bit monotonous and that monotonous quality it does become apparent and I felt as though it was dragging a little bit towards the end and so when the end approaches I thought to myself there were a few occasions where the movie could have finished but it goes on a little bit too long and as I said it's because it reveals itself if it didn't reveal itself and it kept playing those mind games right up until the end I thought it would have been a lot better they definitely reveal it way too early and so when you actually know what's going on, you have that safety barrier and all of a sudden that curiosity and that blanket of uncertainty is not present. And when it's not present, it doesn't have the same capturing ability and therefore it does become a pedestrian kind of film. Thankfully, it doesn't derail itself because the end is actually quite soul-searching, but I just thought to myself it would have been better if it just played it up in the air a little bit more. The uncertainty was what ma was the driving force of that dread that uh, the first half had, but when you actually know everything that's going on, it does alleviate the pressure so you can actually breathe. And so it's not the uh, you know, very suffocating atmosphere that is sustained from start to finish, which does become a bit of a disappointment, but it's not enough to derail it. It's still a very good serial killer film. If you are a fan of serial killer films, I would definitely recommend this one. It doesn't rely on violence. It just relies on the people that you love and maybe the person that you love the most, and that's your role model. Maybe they aren't as good as you think they are and how devastating that can be on a father-son relationship. And so if this sounds like your kind of thing, Clovich Killer is definitely one I would recommend. I thought it was very impressive, and as a result, that I'm going to give it three and a half stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, thank you for watching movies, and I'll see you there.